So the other day we ended up making a couple little simple modifications of the mobile chicken coop, more so with the balancing point. And I do think it's gonna make it a lot easier for me moving that thing around this summer. When it came time to get the Premier One electric fencing that we used to help protect the chickens as well as contain them in particular areas, the ground was just a little too frozen and I didn't wanna to have to force that thing into the ground because then you run the risk of those spikes kind of getting bent up. We've been letting them free range here over the last couple weeks. However, we've been noticing a coyote hanging in a little close here and really would like to get something in place before we end up having a little incident here. So today I'd like to try to one, see if that fencing will go into the ground pretty easy and then get the rest of this coop all set up and ready to go. So what I'd like to do is get the chickens actually set up in the garden. They've been free ranging, hanging out in that area quite a bit, which I really like a lot. Cleaning up some of last year's uh, stuff that was in there, cleaning up some random seeds, kind of acting as little tillers, scratching things up, as well as laying manure in there. And chicken manure is very heavy in nitrogen and a lot of other great things for the soil. However, it's not ideal to use raw chicken manure in your garden, especially around items where you have more root crops or crops that potentially come in contact. Say you lay that manure across that soil and you got strawberries or something that can be bumping up and picking up something from that. However, We've had really good luck using it around crops like corn that are very heavy in nitrogen uh, consumption, as well as obviously the edible is up and away from all that. And it has actually been kind of a secret weapon for us when it comes time to growing our corn. So in both corners over here, I got these little corner feeder things. And this one I got grit, and then the other one I got uh, oyster shell. And uh, you can see even over this whole entire winter, the stuff stayed nice and dry, and it just sits right here in the corner. Works out pretty well. So we'll get these things topped off real quick. So I'm excited to get chickens out there. Right now we're starting to get a lot of rain at this time of year. April showers brings May flowers. Um, but it has got me thinking a little bit here. A lot of times in the springtime we'll do a soil sample testing and then we'll kind of monitor it throughout the year and how things are going. And I think soil sample testing is very important for having a successful garden. It's like playing a game of darts with a blindfold on. You just don't know where the target is or how hard to throw it. Uh, same goes with your soil. If you don't know where your numbers are, you know, you could throw something way out of whack and, you know, something else could be very short. And without knowing those numbers, it's difficult to make accurate adjustments and get things kind of dialed in. We've done soil sample testing a couple of different ways. There's some years we kind of take what I call like the shortcut. We'll use kind of a home kit. They're a lot of times a lot cheaper. You can run multiple tests, like this uh, wrap I test one here. We've used quite a bit. And um, it gives you a 
a ballpark on how you're doing, but it doesn't give you very specific numbers, unlike having something sent off to a lab. The nice part about the lab is it also, uh, lectins will give you some additional information, such as how much organic material is in your soil, and that really kind of helps you get an idea on how well that soil will hold nutrition. And uh, doing this year after year, I think there's a lot of benefits as well because it can give you an opportunity to look at your gardening practices. Are you taking more out than you're putting back in every year? Or, you know, there, there's, it, it kind of gives you an idea on how things are going and you can make adjustments as needed. So um, by moving the chickens in the garden, it's kind of got my curiosity going a little bit. I'm like, well, how much of an impact will those chickens have on that soil sitting there for a week or two weeks? Would we even really notice something? And I don't think this homemade kit would show enough um, detail to really be able to distinguish something like that. I could take video of it, but reality, you know, the color spectrum or something could be a little bit off. And it's, it's a little bit, it's a little tough to do something like that and be able to compare. But uh, a lab would obviously give us very detailed information, no questions asked and less room for air. The other thing is kind of got me think a little bit, you know, I mentioned um, April showers, you know, a lot of the rain happening this time of year, uh, how much of an impact something like that would have on there. And there's probably not a better time of year to really do something like this because we can just set chickens up very easily in the garden. And there's not really a lot of plants yet competing with that, uh, taking from that soil, as well as once we get our stuff in there, I really don't want the chickens sitting in there and then pecking away or eating at the stuff that we are hoping on harvesting in the fall time. I mean, obviously we can set that fencing up in between rows and stuff, but um, I would like to do a little bit of experimenting. So that might be another thing I might do in the next couple of days is take a little soil sample test, maybe wait a week or two and then try doing another soil sample testing and have you know both those sent off the lab and just see what the variation is. If I have to do a lot of those small samples all in that particular area. So yeah, anyways, um, after the last video, all you guys commented and stuff, really found a lot of value. You guys shared a lot of great stuff. There's a lot of things I've been kind of looking into or a lot of things I didn't even really think very much of or uh, didn't know about until you guys kind of piped in on the comments and, and gave some fantastic suggestions. So really a big thank you to all you guys that took the time to comment and um, share your thoughts and ideas on it. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.